Welcome to chapter 12, and we're going to take a look at key issue one, which talks about services. And there are three main types of services that we start out talking about. Uh, we have consumer, we have business, and we have public service. Well, first let's look at consumer. These are people that deal directly with customers. That's 44% of all jobs here in America. This is retail and wholesale, for example, working on the floor with customers ringing up their groceries. It's education when you're providing knowledge to someone. It's health when you're taking care of somebody when they're in the hospital uh, or at a doctor's office. And it's leisure and hospitality, so working at hotels or theme parks. Number two uh, with the types of services is business. This is 24% of all jobs. And this is uh, one way it's called FIRE, F-I-R-E, and this is financial, insurance, and real estate. And these are uh, jobs that really focus on that aspect of our um, economy. So we're talking about like the professionals, we're talking about law and architecture. Uh, it can also be clerical and secretaries. It can have to do with transportation and sending out information. It could be truck drivers, uh, broadcast media like announcers. So all of that falls into that business category. Number three is public service. And these are people that work for the local or federal government. So people that work at the DMV, people that work at the IRS, those are all pu pu part of the public service part of it all. Now there's been a lot of changes in jobs over time. And as we've moved away from industry in this country, we've really moved to tertiary. We've really moved to the service industry. So we're seeing more and more people work in healthcare, especially as we have an aging population. We see more and more people going into education as more and more people go to high school and college and stay in school. We see a lot of changes in that. We see difference in recreation, people really doing jobs uh, like work at arenas or play sports or do things where there's more um, things in tourism even, where we see more and more theme parks spring up and um, activities and jobs related to that. So we've seen a big change and more of a focus on tertiary employment in this country. All right, so how do all these services play into early settlements? Because even the early settlements back in ancient times still had them all. Well, the first consumer service that was really major was the burying of the dead, was removing um, deceased people from the village itself and moving them to um, cemetery areas. And that actually also played into religion. Religion becomes one of the consumer services that's early in um, settlements. We also, the sales and the production of household items, common pots and pans. That was one of the first consumer services that were provided. We also know that tools, clothing, and shelter would have been early consumer services as well. Business services that were early were transportation of food. You had to be able to move the food into the village or around other areas. So food transportation was a very early business service that was provided. Also, the trade for food and items. So people bartered back then, so the idea of taking food and changing it for items and items and changing it for food, that would have been an early business service. Finally, public service. Now we didn't have DMVs back in ancient times. Uh, you didn't have to get a license to uh, drive a camel, but you did have to have military protection, and that was one of the first early public services. Either these were full-time soldiers, or these were part-time soldiers, and that was part of your uh, allegiance to that community was that you would suit up like they did in ancient Greece and go into battle when needed. So those are some of the early services provided in our early settlements. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is global forces, local impacts, one of the side sections in our key issue. This talks about the Great Recession that starts in 2008. Early in 2008, our country slides into a really bad recession, and the entire world kind of collapsed in with us. What caused the recession in America was uh, several factors. Some of the main ones were, number one, a really overpriced, overinflated real estate market. Houses were going for way too much money. Mixed with that, really bad loans. A lot of loans were given for these houses that were overpriced, and they were risky loans without really good backing on them for the people to pay them back. We had poor regulation of the banks going on during this time. And then once the recession started, banks got burned on the loans they were giving out, so they stopped giving out loans. So even though there was properties available, nobody could get loans on them because the banks were worried about being burned again. Now the entire world sinks into this recession, except the poorest areas of Sub-Saharan Africa. I mean, I guess you figure that they were already financially hurting so bad, would it really make any difference? Now, look at this map, and as we take a look at this map, we're seeing areas of the United States that got hit the worst. 
So you can see that the area we typically call the Rust Belt, Southeast United States, and the West Coast took really hard hits. But there were areas that actually overcame the recession decently. The larger cities up in the Northeast and places scattered around the rest of the United States. So when we look at how did they survive, they had industries that were able to continue going. It may have been that they were involved in farming. It may have been that they were involved in insurance, but they had industries, unlike tourism and real estate that they were focused on, that they were able to fall back on. And even though sales may have diminished, they were able to continue and succeed and survive the recession.